Welcome to the DIY series, How to Build Your Food Truck with me, Frank Valtieres, on our weekly Q&A. Thank you all for joining me. Thank you for all the new subscribers, the ones that have been the ones that have been following for a long time. Thank you again for sharing, for commenting all your questions because I do see each and every comment myself and I reply to all of them. And every now and then, I take a few of them that are frequently asked and I do a video, as you see right here, and I try to answer it directly. Instead of commenting all those words, we just throw it straight direct into a video. And I have received a few questions that I wanted to address on here. One of them being on the exterior. Somebody commented, uh, I bought a trailer, but it doesn't have an exterior. It's kind of interesting because I don't know, you know, I, 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 I've never seen a trailer without an exterior, but it makes a great question in the aspect of what do I look for in the exterior of a trailer? So as you guys can see here, this is my food truck right here, which is rolling burritos. There's what I have seen, I bought, I bought six trailers throughout these past few years and I've noticed slight differences between them. Some of them are called screwless, kind of like you see here, there's no rivets on the outside and some of them have the rivets. The rivets kind of go on every stud. So you will see some rivets on different parts of the trailer. Um, to answer the question, can you put your own exterior on a trailer I'm assuming you can. The reason I say you can't, I've never done it, so I don't, I can't, I don't have a video to help you on how to install the exterior of a trailer because I've always bought the same exact style trailers, which is Cargo Mate Blazer, seven by 16. All the trailers have been exactly the same. So I kind of know what I'm getting, which is what kind of tires I'm getting, how much weight does it carry, how the front looks, because mine are all flat front. They don't have the V-nose. And also the only difference that I have seen between the ones that I bought is some of them have the rivets and some of them don't. Mine does not have any rivets. As you guys can see, it's a nice clean surface, but I'm assuming what you can buy, I'll show you inside right now, is a piece of white aluminum or a different color aluminum. And then you can always screw it onto the trailer, kind of like you would a house. I'm assuming it's kind of like siding, where you buy the siding and you can attach it to the house. Uh, Cause in here, in between the in between the walls in between the studs it kind of bows in so it tells me that there's not a flat surface and then like when I cut my window right there with for rolling burritos when I cut this window um, it was it was um, there was no backing on the aluminum so I'm assuming you can kind of do the same way where you can buy an aluminum sheet which I'm going to show you right now and then you can use it that way so that's that's a question that I received quite frequently and again thank you for asking those questions don't forget that I do have an ebook that I'm making right now. Um, it's kind of like I'm adding some bonuses in there for you all. One of the bonuses that you get is the spreadsheet included. And then another one is a FaceTime call with me that you can book anytime. Those would be something that you could receive immediately, little special treats, something that I haven't done for other people before, obviously because it's a new ebook, so I've never done it at all. Uh, I'm still working on the link there. I know I told you guys in the last video that I would have a uh, Stripe account or something set up. I haven't done that yet, so uh, I'm still working on that. We do Zelle, I do a Zelle payment or whatnot. So you can ro email rolling burritos food truck at gmail.com, and then I'm taking the orders right there. And uh, I said the first 500 people would get these bonuses, so we're slowly but surely getting to those numbers. I'm not there yet, but uh, the turnout and the response has been great. So I thank you all for for um, doing that pre-purchase. Just know that you're not getting an ebook yet. That question I do get quite a bit. No ebook will be delivered to you right now. It's a pre-order, pre-booking of the book. <laughs> so um, also another one I was gonna say, the spreadsheet, you guys ask me this quite often and I'm gonna cover this one more time here. I do not offer the spreadsheet for free anymore. At one point in my videos, a long time ago, I offered it for free. I no longer do that. So if you guys request it, um, I do not do it for free. So there's a small, 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 small charge, very, very minimal, less than a, uh, if you guys live in Chicago, it's a Portillo's burger. So a Portillo's burger and fries is what the cost of the spreadsheet is. So if you guys know about Portillo's, just know that it costs less than a double cheeseburger, no pickles, no lettuce, and a large French fry. It's less than that price. Just so you guys can keep that in mind and in perspective, something that'll last forever or something that'll last one meal. You guys take your pick. Uh, another question that I received is on your interior materials, what have you used? So when I built my trailers, I've gone through a different um, evolutions of it. And the evolution started right here. So I started building my first food truck out of stainless steel. You guys can see my food truck inside. 
it's all stainless steel. The ceiling, the walls, everything inside was stainless steel. The reason I did that is because I found real cheap stainless steel. It doesn't exist anymore. I found it from a place here in Lombard, Illinois, in the Chicago suburbs. And then eventually I just started doing this. Uh, the only thing that I do stainless steel now and any other trailers that I built is behind the cooking equipment. You guys can see the cooking equipment right there, my burner and my griddle. Behind there, I do use stainless steel, which is what you see right here. The only thing about stainless steel, it's a great product, probably lasts you decades, decades easily, but it's expensive, it's heavy, but it will, it's nice and it's a durable, it's a durable equipment. It'll probably cost you, I don't even know what a price of stainless steel is right now, maybe, 100 bucks, 200, probably 300 bucks, 400 bucks a, sh a sheet. Um, but like I said, it's real heavy. Oh my gosh, it like literally is heavy. And then after that, because I wanted to save on some cost, because I didn't find any more stainless steel that was cheap, uh, I, I went to this right here, which is FRP, fiberglass reinforced plastic. An inexpensive piece, let's say you just want to use it like on the walls. I wouldn't really like to use this on the ceilings. Um, but I like the other one for the ceiling. So it just depends. You can go, you can mix and match. There's nothing wrong with mix and matching either. Uh, so stainless steel, as I mentioned, I use it behind the, the cooking equipment. This is FRP. And you find this in uh, places maybe like your bathroom. Like if you go to a public restroom, they would have a piece of FRP like this. And then, but it would be bumpy. Usually the ones you have there are, you find them and they're bumpy. I like this one because it's smooth and it's, uh, fire resistant heat resistance when you buy it, it's heat resistant i found this at menards it was a special order and it was about 40 50 bucks a sheet somewhere around there so if you compare it to the stainless steel about 300 400 a sheet this one's about four forty dollars a sheet you guys can see there's quite a bit of difference especially when you start measuring inside which we're going to do right now and i'm going to kind of get a guesstimate of how many sheets we need but this one's pretty nice you rip, you rip that little plastic off and then you're able to use it once um once uh, you, you, I'm laughing because it's like an inside joke, guys. So there's, there's, there's a little inside joke in between me peeling this off. But it's a nice, smooth surface right there. Uh, so that's an option. The third option, which is one of my favorites, is right here. Stay right there. Is white aluminum. So you guys can see this white aluminum. It's kind of like an in-between. And this one, how usually, this one's a little bit thicker, but how it comes shipped sometimes is this one they can, I bought this one at metal supermarkets and this one sometimes gets shipped in a coil. So this is a great option. It's, it's almost like a, it's almost like an in-between as I mentioned. This one's plastic. This one is aluminum. So it's real nice and light. And this one is, it's light too, but it's obviously it's a plastic. And then this one is a metal, so it's the stainless steel. So those are the three options that I have found work well. I like this one when it comes to the ceilings because once you since, since it's a metal right then you then you screw it right here and you screw it right here and it stays nice it's a nice shape that it stays because it's metal this one what i found is if i screw it right here and if i screw it right here with time this metal sorry the middle starts to sag a little bit on the ceiling which is what i noticed uh, on the ceiling okay this is not on the walls or anything like that this is just on the ceiling and it's because mine mine's a little curvy on, on the ceiling so it has a little curve so it's not a flat ceiling. So this is the reason I don't use FRP in the ceiling. Uh, you could use it on the walls, it's a great option. And then use white aluminum on the ceilings. And then you, you can use all three. So I'm just giving you the options of the evolutions that I've used. I don't do stainless steel full throughout, but you can do FRP on the walls. You can do white aluminum on the ceilings. And then this one behind the cooking equipment. So it gives you a good mix of different building, building materials and then different costs. Right, because you with this one, let's go inside and I'll show you part question number three. So that was, what do I use on the inside? And then the other one was, the other question was, um, oh my gosh, I think that was, the other question was, how many sheets do you need when you're building? So back here, what I did is I used, I used a couple of sheets. So I used one sheet from one side to the other, and then I used another sheet up top. So that'd be two sheets right there. And then you just take your tape measure, literally, and then you just measure out because every sheet is about four by eight. So if it measures four by eight, it'd be two sheets that way, right? Because it's 16 feet. So it'd be two and two, and then you go up two because they're only four foot, four foot height, right? So four foot height 
is right here, which is almost half the trailer. So if you do that way on this wall, that'd be one, two, three, four, and then you do this side. But this side, don't forget, we have the window. So you can eliminate a couple of the, of the sides. So you'd be like three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Probably like 13 sheets, something like that, 14 sheets. The good thing about it sometimes is you can buy an extra one. Or if you know where to find them right away, then you can always order one immediately. But I'd rather order an extra. But don't forget, every sheet is eight foot long. So just take out your tape measure and then start measuring out. So they're usually four feet high, which is where this transition piece is right here. And then you just kind of just measure around. Same thing with your ceilings. The ceiling across your trailer, it measures 81 inches, which is six foot and a half. So you can't do one sheet uh, this way. So how I built, how I have my trailers, I have the sheets going this way instead of this way. It's easier to make them this way. So that, that tells you that you can't use uh, one sheet for the whole thing. So you have to use one and a half, one and a half, and things like that. So it'd be about three, four sheets for the ceiling. So it kind of gives you an idea of what we're working with here. So that's kind of the questions that I have. How many sheets do you need? All you do is take out your tape measure. You just take it out, use it. And uh, I, you know, I make, it, it may sound a little basic, but that's all you do is I can't give you the answer of how many sheets that you need. You just have to put a little bit of work in and take out your tape measure and start measuring the spots of where you're gonna put what material and then order that. Um, so again, it comes in handy and we're gonna love to use it. Four by eight sheets, four by 10 sheets, whatever you buy is how you use. I've told you guys the three different equipments that I use. And then uh, what else? And then, oh, on the outside skin of what you use. So with that, hopefully that helped you out when you're building out your food truck, just three frequently asked questions I wanted to cover real fast. Again, if you guys want access to the spreadsheet or if you guys want to pre-order the book, I do appreciate it. Rolling Burritos Food Truck at gmail.com. That's how I'm doing it right now. I'm eventually going to change it where it's more automated. It's just uh, I haven't had, to be honest, I've, <laughs> I've been busy. I still, I still work. So I still, I still do a lot of construction work myself. Uh, so this book is not something that's like you guys are paying my lifestyle. It's just something for me to help you guys out. Don't think that I'm doing it as a, uh, this is the only business that I do. I do also do construction. So, and, and you know, a bunch of other stuff in real estate. So things like that. I just want to make sure that we're clear that this is not something for me to sell you guys something. I just want to help you guys out. And it just takes a little bit of my time. So I need a little bit of value on that because I am taking something complicated and making it simple for you guys to understand. Because I know you guys can build your own food truck. And I know you guys can have your business running in a month. Literally a month, a month and a half. You guys can have a food truck running and having your business up and running. So again, Frank Baltiers, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. We'll see you in the next one.